Roberto. Brent Venables will have Oklahoma recruiting on Georgia's level by the time Oklahoma gets to the SEC. And once in the SEC, BV will recruit on an incredible level, just saying to recruits, come to OU and play in the SEC. I don't know if it's that easy, but uh, (laughs) because they can go to LSU and play in the SEC or go to Texas and play in the SEC and keep going down the list. Yeah, no, I mean, I, yeah, it's definitely not that easy, but I, <laughs> I, I do agree um, inherently with the point. I, I don't know. I mean, at, at Georgia's level is, I mean, it'll take a few years to get there. Right. But I think Roberto to your, to your point, I think that SEC patch will inherently very much help recruiting. Uh, particularly on the defensive side of the ball, you know, getting some of those guys. And Oklahoma's in, I think the, the good thing about what they've done, you know, this year, um, even though it, it didn't necessarily materialize on the field, but, you know, through the, you know, the last bit of that recruiting cycle last year, and certainly this year being a top, having that top five recruiting class at this point is, um, is, is one of those things where they've, they've been able to get in and, and, and have, some of those conversations and even beat um, some SEC schools like Alabama for, uh, for some kids. Um, right. I mean, you look at, um, you know, even though it's not, he's not an SEC, it wasn't an SEC guy, a guy like Peyton Bowen, probably the biggest defensive recruit that Oklahoma's had in the last few years as a five-star PJ Adabare. He's been Oklahoma for quite some time. He was a five-star kid. And then you've got David Hicks knowing that, Oklahoma was very much in the conversation as being a, you know, a five-star defensive tackle. And so I think they're, um, and, and some of the guys, David Stone, that they're going after that are, um, you know, that they're in a, a really good shape with as a 2024 guy who's a kind of a can't miss um, for uh, for Oklahoma. So they're, they're in on a lot of these conversations more so than they've been in the past. And yeah, we've talked about this. They're, they've been in the conversations, but they're, they're on the, I mean, they're on the doorsteps of, of getting a lot of these big time defensive linemen in. So I think to, to your point here, there's a lot of opportunity to get even better. Um, but some of that's got to get backed up with play on the field. You know, you, you get a pass. I think most, most kids, most analysts, most media outlets will, will give, um, that, that kind of know the situation will give Venables and the team a little bit of a pass for year one. But if, if this, if this looks like a eight and five team next year, then some questions are going to start being asked. I don't, I don't necessarily think that that's going to be the truth or that's going to be accurate and what, what happens. But if it does happen, then, you know, schools like Oklahoma, they're not going to be willing specifically as you look at kind of going into the SEC here in a couple of years, they're not going to be, um, you know, to the, the patience isn't going to be um, as as thick um, as as it would be at some other schools. So I, I say that to say recruiting is they're, they're recruiting as well as you could possibly imagine with the, you know, the kind of season that they had on the field. Now, if they can, you know, make a big um, jump this year, I think it just in, particularly on the defensive side of the ball in terms of that production, I think it gives some of these recruits and some of these, you know, an extra thing, some, something to think about where you're not only looking at, you know, what these, what these coaches has, have done in the past in terms of getting players into the NFL and getting players to play at a very, very high level, all Americans and, and, and things of that nature. But then you've also got, you know, the winning on this side of it. So, no, okay. It is transferable from Clemson to, uh, to Oklahoma. It is, can, transferable from you know from javali's perspective from alabama to oklahoma so those are the things that need to continue to happen um i think this year for for oklahoma and i think you'll i think you're starting to see with the talent there and kind of the different mentality that those things are hopefully getting fresh blood in um and kind of new perspectives and and things like that that you, you start to see that more and more with this team Russ is asking about Ethan Downs. Now, Ethan Downs is extremely productive on the outside. I don't know why he would want to move him inside, but uh, that's his proposal. Yeah, I think, you know, Mark, there's a couple of guys uh, that, that you that you kind of think about with um, 
with Ethan Downs and, and Reggie Grimes that came in as this year as a couple of guys that most people thought um, that would make a big, big jump from last year to this year. And it never really materialized for, for either of those kids. Um, Grimes had, you know, had a good couple of first, um, uh, first, first games of this year had, I think had three sacks for the, through the first couple of games, but never was really able to make a, a, a lot of movement. And then kind of the same thing with Ethan Downs. He was just kind of a guy that was out there, you know, didn't make a ton of, um, you know, didn't make a ton of plays, but, you know, kind of at, at, at the same time, um, he's a guy that a lot of people still love from an upside perspective. So we'll see. Um, I, I don't necessarily anticipate him moving inside, um, but you know, we'll see, we'll see what that, what that looks like because he will be pushed. And that's the thing. That's a lot of the thing about competition, right? When you know that you're going to get pushed, um, it's going to make you, it's going to make you that much better. It's going to give you that much more sense of urgency to put it together, not only in the, on the practice field, but in the games as well. Um, so, you know, I think both of those kids knew, you know, what was kind of behind them and they really did not have the, um, you know, the, the thought that, you know, they were going to get replaced or things like that. So now with some of these guys that Oklahoma brought in, Trace Ford, Rondell Bothroyd, you've got Devon Sears, you, you, you know, you've got some of these guys and whoever else they end, end up bringing in will be able to push those to, you know, in a perfect world to hopefully make, make each other better.